You know, it says in 1 Thessalonians, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God. And I thought Friday when I was down in the church office that he was coming. If any of you were in New Brighton on Friday evening, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, we were hit with this violent wind and rain and hail. I, I felt like the windows in the church were going to be broken because it was really coming down. So I don't know where you were living on Friday evening, but for us on Oak Hill and down here, I thought the Lord was coming because it was probably the worst I've ever had in my in my lifetime. Yeah. So Right. No. Uh, up at the Grace uh, Methodist Church, there was a car park, and it's covered by trees mm -hmm. that had fallen on the vehicle. So it, it was, and we didn't get electric for over 24 hours, and I, I know Joe didn't get it for 24 hours, and, and it was it was a while, you know, it was, yeah, I, I thought the Lord was coming. I'm ready, but I, I just hope you're ready. So, uh, again, just remember that. So, praise the Lord. We're here today. It's a beautiful day. Kind of cool. Last week it was 90. Now this week it's 67. <laughs> so, who knows? So, anyway, we just get thanks. You are here today. Let's pray. Father, we do come into your presence and we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promise and the acknowledgement that one day you will be coming back again. And when that day comes, you will be coming with a shout of joy and trumpets will be will be blaring. And we will just be thankful. And you will take the dead first, but then you'll come back for us who are still alive, if we are still alive, and take us. We thank you, Lord, for that promise. We look to you now and to your word. We thank you for the prophet Daniel and what he did. What an example to follow. We thank you, Lord, for the message you've given to me, Lord. And I give you thanks and praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Amen. Hey, the announcement you can see there. Lily Bill, there's a little insert there about the uh, yard sale. Uh, talking to Dennis, they have a lot of stuff. So if, you, if you'd like to go look at stuff, then you might want to go out to Lilyville, uh, Elwood City, on the 13th or, or the 14th, okay? Uh, Dave put the song fest for September. I listened to it. He does a good job. I appreciate that, Dave. So the song fest is available. The Christmas dinner, all right? Don't forget that. Don't forget the Christmas dinner. Mark your envelope, Christmas dinner. Uh, and I did fall. Again. Again. And I have a union mark right here. So, but I'm here. Praise the Lord. Uh, any announcements that are not in the bulletin? I think Shirley has one, maybe. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to do it now? Yeah, do it now. Okay. Here is a card from Linda. And if you get a chance to look at it, she's been painting these. She's finally found a niche where she can release some of her energy, and I think this just looks like our church from 6th Avenue. So, it does. Dear church family, thank you so much for all of the supplies you sent from my classroom. It's so thoughtful of you to be thinking of me and my colleagues as we start a new year. The kids appreciate it as well. Hope you are all doing well, and thank you again for your generosity and kindness. Love, Linda. Okay, thank you. We're still collecting items Shirley's taken them to her, but if you have anything, just drop them in. They can use them all year long. This week I sent a box of Kleenex with Jocelyn to school because her nose was running and it's fall and the, her allergies were in full force. So they can use the supplies all the time. Right, right. Yeah, those teachers appreciate that. Like I said, Kleenex tissues are gold, you know, because the kids use them, the teachers use them, okay? So good. Thank you very much for that support. Call to worship is out of Psalm 103 and 4. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us. We are His. We are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. We will just give thanks and praise. 
If you got an opportunity, you want to greet somebody, say hello, wave to them, go give them a, a shake, a hand, give them a hug, whatever. If you're if you're a hugger. <laughs> Dave, is this on? Is this on? What's the matter? Can you hear me? Yeah, if you speak into this microphone. Okay, if I speak in, am I? Can you hear me better? Yeah. Better. Sure. I can hear you. Okay. What is it on? Okay. They're on. All right. First hymn is number 299. We have come tonight to worship him, to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus, and we believe that he is alive and well and right here with us tonight. Do you believe that? And it is in his name that we have gathered together in this place. When we gather in his name, he promises to be in our midst and to equip us with the strength and the power and the hope to do what he has called us to do. The crowds have lined the narrow street to see this man. Just a carpenter, some say, and he's leading fools astray. And yet many kneel to give him praise. And in his eyes they glimpse the power that sees the hearts of all men. his father's mind he speaks his father's words for he comes in the name of the Lord and there is strength in the name of the Lord there is power in the name of the Lord When my strength is nearly gone And when there's nothing left to do But just depend on you And the power of your name And as we call upon your name Your strength to show we can know the master's plan we can extend
If we turn to number 628 for our res um, responsive reading, I will be with you, is from A Isaiah 43, 1 through 3, and 41, 10, and Jeremiah 29. <clears throat> this is what the Lord says, He who created you, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will, I will be, be with, with you. When you walk through the fire, you, you will, will not, not be burned. burned. I am the Lord your God, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen, I will strengthen you and, and help you. I will uphold you with, you with my righteous my right hand. hand. When you call upon me, I will listen. You, you will, will seek, seek me and find, find me when, when you seek, seek me with, with all, all your heart. heart. May the Lord add his blessing to their reading. Praise God. Our word for today comes from Proverbs. 16, 9. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Okay. As we continue with prayer and we think of those on the back and those who were in need of prayer, we continue to lift uh, Deb Hunt. Uh, did I hear you say she goes and has her staples taken out this week? Tuesday, okay. So continue to pray for Deb and, and Cliff and the family. Terry Kalutka is now in the rehab doors. She's been moved to rehab. Okay. So remember, uh, Encompass Health and Swickley. Rodney is still having some pain. Jim Corfield, Martha Smelter, praise the Lord, Martha's here. Uh, any update on you, young lady? You what? Still working at it. You'll be working at it. I'm going to tell you what. You're going to be working at it for the next few years. Oh. I'm still, I'm still, work, I'm still working at it 10 years later. I don't, want to, I don't want to give you any bad news, but it's, it's going to take a while. Just do it. Just do it. I know you will. Just do what they tell you to do, Martha, and you'll be okay. All right. Very good. Ryan Kornecki, Roy's uh, Bartlett's son-in-law, you know, continue to pray for... Uh, him, his recovery on his facial injuries, and of course, able at some point the Lord will bless him and his eyesight will return to his right eye. How about Danny? He does, okay, all righty. Bob Dyson, you know, lost his wife. Uh, continue to pray for Bob. Uh, Dave Mason, continue. Uh, Bar Mason, Jim LaGood, back pain. Al Martin is here. Praise the Lord for that. All the rest that are listed there are youth, those who are traveling, people will be traveling. Doris Jean and I will be traveling tomorrow morning on the way to uh, the Outer Banks, Lord willing. And uh, so pray for traveling mercy. Always thank the Lord for traveling mercy. Wilma McMillan, our shut ins, the Lord's pal. Jan and Jack Begley. I think Jack's having a birthday pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. So send him a card. He should have his address. Uh, our military people, those who are overseas, those who are stateside, wherever they might be, keep them safe. Be with their families as they wait for them to come back home safely. And the other things that are listed there are missionaries. Continue to pray for our missionaries. Uh, the, you know, for... Um, uh, their continued service to the Lord, uh, Camp Sunrise Mountain, uh, the, the country, our leaders, the upcoming election. We'll just uh, trust in the Lord for that uh, and wh whatever. Any, anybody have something that needs to be added? Doris Jean. Yeah, she passed away. Okay. All right. Sure, you can say something.
Okay. Oh, my. Welcome to life. <laughs> okay, Dave. Yeah, I know. You know, you know we have a defibrillator pacemaker, and I know Shirley shared about her husband. Anyway, if that goes off, you'll know it. Because it'll knock you from here down to there if, if it goes off. So, yeah, well, and you, drove, and you drove yourself to the emergency room. Yeah, I know. Okay. All right. Okay, Dave. And I didn't want to get them to call 911. So what that say? We're old. We're crusty. <laughs> don't bother me. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Yes, Marsha. Very good. Okay. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. Okay. So, your car is fixed. That, that's good. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Yes, yeah, Shirley. Because we don't get hail storms around here very often, you know. But uh, yeah, a little scary. But then we made it. We're okay. So we're glad. Do you have any extra calls there, Mark, during that storm? Oh, okay. Okay. Sean. So he had he had damage, huh? Well, that's that's damage. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, you have two friends. <laughs> prayer okay so you, last time you had one friend so now you got two way to go girl okay okay what a friend we have in Jesus number 630 there's another one huh well, where there's another friend where what a friend we have in Jesus oh yeah I thought maybe somebody else had another <laughs> prayer I thought somebody else had a prayer I missed them this, this morning in Sunday school, you'll get a kick out of this. I left my books at home. <laughs> so I went back after them, and I thought, devil, you're just trying to confuse me here. I don't know what, exactly how to do things, but I want you to know I left him at the door. So he didn't come in here because, in Jesus' name, we have a friend. That's right. Okay, number 630. 630.
discouraged Take it to the Lord in prayer Can we find a friend so faithful Who will all our sorrow share Jesus knows our every Spies forsake thee, take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee, thou wilt find a solace there. What a friend we have in Jesus. Yes, Lord, what a friend we have in you. What a friend we have in Jesus. As the song says, what needless pain we bear because we do not take church that prays. We are a house of prayer, and I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for the faith and the trust that we have in you, Lord, as you bring us through each and every day, each and every situation. And as we look at the, those who are on the prayer chain, Continue to pray for Deb Hunt. Glad she came through the surgery the way she did, but now she's on the road to recovery. Be with her, be with Cliff, be with the family. Terry Klutka, who's now in Compass Health, be with her as she recovers. And Rodney Nicholson. And we're glad to have Martha Smeltzer back. Thank you, Lord. And Ryan, we continue to lift you, lift to you, Ryan Kornecki, up in Clarion. You know, he will heal from those facial injuries and that right out eye, Lord, that you will take it, Lord, as you have healed the blind in so many ways and so many times. And for Dan, who's finally going to get an MRI this, this month, and Bob Dyson and Dave Mason, continue to be with Dave, you know, as he goes through the situation where he has to wear that horror, not the most comfortable thing in the world, but it's, it's there for a reason, we pray that you will continue to be with him. And Jim Good, and we're glad to have Al Martin here today, Lord. Thank you for Al and Glenda and his family. We thank you, Lord, indeed, for our youth, for our children, for little Ryland, Lord. Be with her, Lord. The shut-ins, Wilma, Dolores, Jack, and Jan Begley. The concerns we have, and our sister Ellen Rand not feeling well, Lord, having, having issues with her health. Be with her, give her strength, give her hope. We're glad... For Marsha getting her automobile fixed, we're, we're glad for Jared. He's such a wonderful guy, a wonderful addition to our board as a trustee. And for Sean, a friend of uh, Mark, who has storm damage. A tree fell through the house during that storm. Be with Sean as he re gets that repaired and whatever. And Natalie and Nicole, who have prayer requests. And on and on it goes. You know what the, those requests are and what their needs are. We thank you. We thank you for our military. Be with our military, our men and women, whatever branch of the service they might be, wherever they might be stationed, Lord. Keep them safe, Lord. Keep them safe. Father, we pray for world peace, for our youth, for unsaved individuals, our missionaries. Be with them, Lord. We're so thankful and grateful for our country, the home of the free because of the brave. And we're so thankful, Lord, that we have the opportunity to come into our house of worship, our house of choice, each and every Sunday to, to pray, to sing, 
to hear your, the word. I thank you for the privilege of delivering that word. Be with me now as I continue on serving you until that day you call me home. And I'll be grateful and thankful in the name of my Savior, in the name of our Savior, and that is indeed Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, Daniel, example for us to follow. If you read the book of Daniel, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, I don't know, but, you know, I would recommend that you do. Doris Jean and I had the opportunity this past spring to go to uh, Lancaster to watch the uh, Daniel. And so wonderful and so uplifting. When, when he was in that lion's den, it showed him just sitting there, and the lions were just sitting there like pets. You know, they were not going to devour him, because God blessed him, his, his obedience to the word of God. And as Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego went into the fiery furnace, and as they showed it there at Lancaster, the three of them there, plus Jesus was there, and not a hair was singed on there. Because, God, of your strength, of your guidance, and I thank you. So how do you make a decision, whether it's a large decision or a small decision? Well, see, some people just give in to the desires of the moment. Others carefully consider the pros and the cons, then make a choice that seems most beneficial. However, both of these approaches can be based merely on a person's preference. The best way to make decision is to rely on the principles found in the Word of God. Today I've selected a verse out of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 9. I guess, yeah, verse 14, I'm sorry. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that men will revere him and women also. May the Lord and his blessing to their reading. Let us pray. I thank you, Lord, for your word, for your promises, for your indulgence, for your love, for the fact that you take care of us, Lord. Even when we sin, you still pick us up and show us the way. You will never leave us nor forsake us. I'm so grateful and thankful for that promise, Lord. Because, Lord, when I pray that Jesus pray, I just say, Jesus, Lord, forgive me, for I am a sinner. Because we all sin and fall short of your glory. But you're still there. As I read the Bible this year, and I look at the Israelites, and how many times they were disobedient, and then they, they, you know, they reconciled, and you came back, and you blessed them, and they go and be disobedient again and again and again. And each time you, you welcomed them back when they, when they repented. And that is so wonderful to know because, you know, we are human beings and we, and we do sin from time to time. Forgive us, Lord. Be with us now. And I ask this in your name. Amen. See, Daniel, Daniel knew how to make choices based on the in, unchanging uh, scriptures. He followed them. Although he was under tremendous pressure to live like the Babylonians, he stayed true to the biblical principles he had learned as a young child. So let's take a look at the historical setting of that time. Daniel lived in Babylon during a period of Hebrew exile. After conquering Jerusalem, King Nebuchadnezzar selected the brightest and the most capable young Jewish men. His plan... His plan, not God, but his plan was to make them act and think like Babylonians. All, along with others, Daniel was trained in the culture, the literature, the religion, and worldview of his captors. Daniel and the other men cooperated with the king's plan as long as it didn't, as long as it didn't conflict. It didn't conflict with their faith in God. They knew how to make righteous choices, even in an ungodly setting, which they were. There are two fundamental bases for making a decision. The first principle is a fixed, determined mode of conduct or moral rule based on the Word of God. As Christians, 
As Christians, we should live by convictions that are grounded in the Word of God. For example, the Ten Commandments tell us not to steal, not to lie, not to cheat, not to murder, not to commit adultery, or worship false gods. Issues such as these should be, and they are, non-negotiable for us as believers. We can't... I read a sign at a church one time. The Ten Commandments is not multiple choice. You understand that? It's not multiple choice. They're there for a reason. The second basis for decisions is preference. These are moral choice choices based on likes and dislikes. Whatever seems best in the moment. A person who operates on this basis asks what's going to make me feel good, please me, honor me, or benefit me. He or she is like someone speeding down a dark highway with no center line, without clear boundaries. That person is in great danger and looking to have a wreck. So Daniel's example. As part of the regiment, Daniel and the other young Jewish nobles were expected to eat the king's food. The best the nation had to offer. However, the meat was not kosher. It had not been prepared properly, according to Mosaic law. Moreover, it had been offered to idols. That's why Daniel asked his superiors if he and his friends could eat only vegetables and drink water for ten days. After the trial period, Daniel and his friends not only looked fine, they looked healthier than the other young men. See, God honored them. God honored them for keeping their convictions. Daniel lived such an exemplary life that, he, that years later, some of his fellow leaders became jealous. I can imagine. They convinced the king to outlaw prayer of any god or man except himself. Those who disobeyed the law would be thrown into a pit full of lions. Despite this threat, Daniel continued to kneel before the Lord. Although he was arrested and thrown to the lions, God spared his life. If you look at the sixth chapter of Daniel, and we read these words in these, in these verses, you know, in, in verses 4 to 24, and also in, in 19 to 24. I think 19 to 24 kind of puts it in perspective. See, these, these people, these, these other people, they were jealous of Daniel and, and, and those who also followed God's law. And, and they accused them of everything. And, and they went to the king and, and, and they, they wanted them, them to be punished for being disobedient to the, the, the laws of the, the Babylonians. And the king was kind of like dismayed about doing that. But he knew what the law was, so, so he said that he would do that. So in verse 19 to 24, we, we read these uh, words, okay? He was thrown into the, the lion pit, and the king, at the first light of the dawn, the king got up and turned to the lions and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to rescue you from the lions? Guess what? Daniel answered. O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, O king. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. At the king's command, and listen to this, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and children. Wow. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. How about that? How about that? Daniel is an example that we can follow. He was not 
eaten by the lions. And, and as Doris and I sat there, and, and it showed Daniel sitting uh, there in the lion's den, and those lions were just laying there, uh, just like they were, they were his kittens, his pets. But those who falsely accuse, they paid for what they did and what they said. And when they went into the pit, before they hit the floor, the lions devoured them. See, not only was Daniel restored to a position of authority, he also had the opportunity to serve as a leader for approximately 70 years under four different kings, Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, Darius, and Cyrus. He had a tremendous influence on the kingdoms that they represented. He also wrote some of the most significant prophecies in the Bible. Our choices, your choices, our choices, my choices, our God should be guided by core beliefs such as these. First of all, that Jesus, Jesus is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Jesus is the Savior of the world. He is more than a good man, a prophet, or a healer. Jesus is the only way to God. And we read this in John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no one comes to the Father except through me. If you don't know Christ... Now, sometimes I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. But you know what? The choir has to sing. So keep singing, people, to your friends and your relatives. And don't worry if they say, oh, you talk about is Jesus. Or well, who else would you talk about? You shouldn't be talking about anybody else. Well, you don't talk about Steelers today. But you should be talking about Jesus. You're the choir, so sing. To know him, to make him known. The next, the Bible is the inspired word of God, and as such is infallible and in inerrant. In 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.16, we read these words. All scripture, not some, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Here it is. Our guide. And you can't discount certain passages because they are hard to accept, or you just uh, that, 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 does that Bible really say that? No, yeah, it says that. So you just can't pick and choose. Next, our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. Believers should not abuse their bodies with drugs, with alcohol, immorality or other distract, destructive behaviors. Money is not a God. Accumulation of wealth is not for the, our highest priority. Hebrews 13.5 Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because as said, never, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. living by a preference. Why do people fail to align their lives with the Word of God? Well, here's some reasons. The fear of rejection. People are afraid that if they go against the crowd, others will not like them. Uh-oh. Poor pity you. They will reject you. On that day, they stand before God. He may reject them, but he won't reject you. There's greed. I watch some of these, songs, these shows where they have money, and these people keep going for the next level, the next level, because they want the higher amount of money. And it's just a, an example of greed. And then, then they make a choice, and they make the wrong choice, and they lose everything that they had accumulated. You know, I want to there. You, know, you get to a certain point. I watched it a little bit the other day. I just happened to hit on it. And they just answered the question for 125000 And they asked him the $250,000 question. And he wasn't sure. He said, you know what? I'm going to take the $125,000. Well, how about that? Somebody else might have said, well, I'm going to go for two hundred fifty. Well, they asked him, what would have been your answer? And he gave the answer that he would have 
taken, and it was the wrong answer. He would have lost everything. Some people are willing to be dishonest or unkind to acquire more money or to get a promotion that they seek. Compromise. Compromise. We know what that means. Rationalizing sin is a quick route to bondage. For example, some people think one drink won't hurt. They fail to consider the long-term effects on themselves and on others. Not just drinking, but anything. Hey, you know, I got this girl at work, you know, she kind of likes me, you know, you know, we'll just, you know, what the heck, you know. I still love my wife, but, you know, so what? Yeah, so what? You're going to be sorry for that. Although the Lord ultimately delivered Daniel and his friends from the uh, den and fiery furnace, they were willing to die rather than to worship a false, false god. Let me just read out of Daniel again, chapter 3. 16 and 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Ebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we were thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times harder than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers of the army to tie them up and throw them into the blazing furnace. Even the men wearing and doing that fainted and died because of the heat. And she dragged me, Meshach, and Abednego went into the furnace. And when they looked, they saw the image of four people. Four people. And who was that fourth person? That fourth person was Jesus. And they were not burned. There was not even a, a hair on her body was not even singed. God rescued them for their obedience to Him. We should have the same commitment in obeying God. Sometimes we, will, we He will rescue you. Sometimes, other times, He will walk with you through the difficult times or the persecution. So how can we Become a person of, conf of, of conf confliction. First of all, you must live for a cause greater than yourself. Some things should be non-negotiable, for you don't consider choices that are forbidden in God's word. Expect conflict. It will happen. If you live by a godly principle, not everyone will understand your high standards. And it may also make other people uncomfortable that they reject you. So be expected to be rejected. Obey God and leave all the consequences to Him. Decide to follow His direction without regard to the results. Because the results will be obedience. He is with you. He is with us no matter what. This church has not been here for two or three months. This church has been here for 170 some years. Because people have been faithful. Your parents, your grandparents, those who have served, the saints who have gone on to their reward. And finally, remember God is sovereign. He is absolutely in control. No matter what somebody might say, no matter what somebody might write in a book, he is, God is absolutely in control of all that happens in this world. So in conclusion, my prayer today is that you will choose to live your lives based on the unchanging truth found in the Word of God. His guidelines will save you from different kinds of heartaches. Will you experience difficulty? Yes. But by obeying Him always results in eternal peace and eternal joy. to you.
and we look at Daniel, we look at his fellow Hebrews and what they did and what, how they obeyed and how they prayed. And you will honor that as you will honor us, our obedience. And I thank you, Lord, for that. Be with us now as we leave today. We thank you you brought us through the storm on Friday. Continue to be with us now as we go forward. I just give you thanks and the praise, as always, in the name of my Lord, in the name of our Savior, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long Perfect submission, perfect delight Visions of rapture now burst on my side Angels descending, bring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long praising my savior all the day long praising our savior all the day long go in peace god be with each and every one of you see you in a couple weeks for